Well, we've got to talk expectations and what catalysts are coming up this week, especially after the maddening banking crisis that we've been going through. The Federal Reserve quote unquote bailout. They don't want us to use that phrase, but they're just lying to us. And what's going on with expectations for CPI this week? So first things first, on a Tuesday, we're going to get Lennar earnings. We'll get a small business optimism survey. That survey is expected to come in with a read of 90.2. Prior read was 90.3. We have CPI, Consumer Price Index, expectations coming out for tomorrow at 5.30 a.m. We will be getting CPI readings. I will be streaming that live, so make sure you are here. 5.30 a.m. Pacific Time, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. What do we have? Expectations are CPI, month over month, prior read, 0.5. This read, 0.4. That's 4.8% annualized. CPI, month over month, core, prior read, 0.4. This read expected to be 0.4. CPI, year over year. Prior read, 6.4. The current survey says 6%. CPI, X food and energy. In other words, core, year over year. Prior read, 5.6. Current read or survey, 5.5. That's going to be a big deal. Not only do we have that for Tuesday to prepare for, but we also have PPI and some other price indices coming up for the rest of the week. So let's go through all of those together. But first, When it comes to these expectations for CPI, it's really important to remember that that month over month number, in my opinion, is the most important. We want month over month headline and month over month core to hopefully miss to the lower side. Keep in mind, Joe Biden already gave us a spoiler alert on CPI. He said CPI will be coming in good on Tuesday. Now, who knows what kind of leak or information he got But I think that was a way of him trying to signal to markets, please don't panic on my watch. Inflation's going away. Everything is going to be A-OK. And as long as inflation goes away, the Federal Reserve can pivot. Now, is it possible that Joe Biden uh, is, is trying to soothe the economy and then potentially at the same time cook the CPI books? Sure, anything's possible. But the goal is from the side that we can actually look at data to hope CPI reads come in low and that would give the Federal Reserve more ammunition to backstop the economy as necessary and if necessary or as it continues to be necessary. Because personally, I think a $25 billion bailout for the banks is a little bit of a drop in the bucket compared to the toxic assets that they really have. But but hey, then again, we'll see. Uh, After that, we have on uh, Wednesday, ooh, the Ides of March coming up. Uh, Keep in mind, we also, uh, expiring next week, have a coupon code for the programs on Building Your Wealth. All of them. It's the Stocks and Psychology of Money Group, most popular, Zero to Millionaire Real Estate Investing. Fantastic if you're trying to get into real estate, build your wealth. Uh, We've got the Do-It-Yourself Property Management and Rental Renovations. Really, there's a program for everyone in order to build their wealth. Uh, whether you want to make more money as an entrepreneur, uh, an employee, real estate agent, content creator, you name it. Somebody actually gave a really nice shout out uh, yesterday. Uh, they mentioned that their presentation skills basically 10 x uh, after taking my YouTube creator course uh, to help them in their presentations. They wrote, recommend your YouTube course to up your presentation game. I was good at it before, but I was told by a superior that my last training was the most informative and entertaining in the past 12 years. Thanks to your YouTube course. That was really cool. Uh, anyway, check that out uh, via the link down below. So moving on with these catalysts, Wednesday. We get, uh, oh, we do also get retail sales on Tuesday. Let's keep going with retail sales first then. So, uh, oops, nope, sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. Retail sales is Wednesday, I was right about that, okay. Retail sales Wednesday. Uh, Retail sales expected to come in at 0.4 to the downside month over month, excluding auto, we're looking for negative 0.1, excluding auto and gas, negative 0.3. Retail sales controls, negative 0.3. That stands in stark contrast to the numbers that we had in January. In January, you literally had negative 0.4, negative 0.1, negative 0.3, negative, uh, or sorry, that's, those are the expectations, negative 3. Uh, that's the expectation now for February. What you actually had right before that in January was 3%, 2.3%, 2.6%, and 1.7%. So a massive cooling 
of retail sales is expected on Wednesday. That report comes out at 5.30 a.m. Right at the same time as we get the PPI numbers. Oh my gosh, so much stuff. CPI on Tuesday, PPI on Wednesday, retail sales on Wednesday. And here are the PPI numbers, which is the producer price index. The last PPI read, we had a month over month PPI of 0.7. That's terrible, that's 8.4% annualized. What did we end up getting in survey this time? 0.3. PPI core month over month, 0.4 is the expectation, down from 0.5 last time. PPI X food, energy, and trade, uh, 0.3 versus 0.6 the last time. Final demand, 5.4 versus 6 last time. So now that will be on uh, Wednesday. On Tuesday, we also get Adobe Q1 earnings. Uh, Wednesday, we get the National Association of Home Builders uh, calling for a read of 40 on housing market optimism indices. That is uh, slightly higher than uh, what we had in December, which is the lowest level that we've seen in a decade for home builder confidence. Thursday, we get Dollar General and FedEx conference calls. We're going to be looking for evidence of potentially a wage price spiral. And on Friday, we get the University of Michigan's forecast for consumer sentiment, looking for a read of about 67.4. Now, a lot of course is being made of a wage price spiral because a lot of people are expecting that a wage price spiral is exactly what could lead to the essential unleashing of a Paul Volcker, where basically markets get rug pulled, where interest rates have to skyrocket in order to event a wa prevent a wage price spiral. Barron's, uh, and, and look, I've argued this plenty of time before, so I don't want to sound redundant that we're, we're seeing uh, a lack of pricing power for wages, whether it's in healthcare or even retail hospitality, it's a lot easier to find people. Uber, Lyft are talking about it. Chipotle's talking about it. Starbucks is talking about it. Uh, the software companies are talking about it. Uh, these are all in earnings calls. It's very clear there's really no wage price spiral, which is good, and those conditions could change, but knock on wood, they don't. Barron's, though, uh, did have a piece in their uh, Sunday magazine or Saturday magazine. Uh, anyway, uh, they talk about that talk about a wage price spiral, it's wrong. Fear among policymakers and others that accelerating wages must push prices up is basically wrong. And so they give this sort of analysis where they say, look, if prices go up 5% and wages go up 5%, but productivity also goes up a little bit, then wages really only went up about 3%. And labor only contributes about 80% to the cost of producing goods. Uh, and services, so then that's really only like a 2.4% increase. And then since we can reduce uh, these sort of increases by housing services as well, then a 5% increase in wages really only increases CPI by about 1.4%. This is their crazy math for how they came to this conclusion, but they're basically trying to make the argument that what wage price spiral, there's no wage price spiral here. But that does, aside from sort of their funny math, it is reiterated by what's actually happening in the data. So they're not necessarily wrong here, even though I think their math is a little bit of a stretch. I think what's more important for markets this week will obviously be the Silicon Valley banking crisis. How much is that going to lead to bank runs at other banks? I'm going to be flying over to a NorCal. So if you're, if you're in NorCal, slide into the DMs on Twitter or IG. I will be uh, probably in the Santa Clara, Palo Alto, San Jose region today. Uh, I wanna see what's going on at the banks. I wanna meet some VCs. So if you're a startup founder, or uh, a VC, I, I would love to talk to you. Uh, so hit me up in the DMs. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens. But uh, yeah, uh, wow, okay, a lot of catalysts this week. They're gonna be big things we wanna pay attention to.